from MTN News, you're watching Montana This Morning. Washington is in the final stages of preparations for the inauguration of Joe Biden as president. Just ahead, learn what to expect in the nation's capital today. Fresh tire marks left in the snow after a man drives his truck into the steps of the Law and Justice Center. I'm Annie Johnson with more coming up on where the investigation is at now. Six o'clock straight up on this Wednesday. Chet Lehman, and Holly Brantley, Matt Elwell. Thank you for staying with us here on the, the CW or on the KBZK KXLF streaming apps yes. uh, as CBS picks up their early coverage of the inauguration of uh, Joseph uh, Biden. Matt, uh, the weather for that, if we were doing it here in southwest Montana, not bad. No, it's actually uh, pleasant. By the way, uh, different letters here in the corner, but... Uh, same old Montana this morning. There you go. That's right. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to apologize for being you. You just be you. Uh, temperatures uh, for the morning into the 20s, a couple of 30s. It's actually pretty mild. I think our biggest drawback for the day at this point, uh, we're not going to see quite as much sunshine as we did yesterday. We're going to see just a touch more wind. Our daytime highs should be into the mid and upper 30s for much of the area today. It should be dry at least until the evening and then we start to see some snow sneaking back in. We are of course going to break down your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks Matt. Law enforcement across the country preparing for Inauguration Day, including the Gallatin Valley. Yeah, Bozeman Police Department says at this point it has not received any specific timely threats of violence. The PD says it is taking general tips and working with federal, state and local agencies, gathering reports about potential activity. Interim Police Chief Jim Veltkamp says Bozeman PD will be out with increased awareness today, but they have a goal of not over-responding and allowing people to exercise their freedoms. But law enforcement will be keeping an eye out for threatening behavior and or property damage. So the goal is to certainly be aware that things can happen. We are certainly increasing patrols and checks of certain areas of town and certain buildings. Yet at the same time, try not to not to be paranoid uh, or over to respond uh, based on the information we've heard. Interim Chief Velkamp says people are free to protest, free to assemble, but law enforcement again will be keeping an eye out for threatening behavior and or property damage. President Trump has just a few hours left in office before Joe Biden is sworn in as the next president. The coronavirus and the threat of another attack on D.C. will be on the minds of those at today's inauguration. CBS's Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill with details of this historic day. President-elect Joe Biden becomes the nation's 46th president when he takes the oath of office today. Hi, hi, yes, Truman. Hi, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. After an emotional send-off from his home state yesterday. When I die, Delaware will be written on my heart. Mr. Biden traveled to Washington, where he paid tribute to the 400,000 Americans who died due to the coronavirus. To heal, we must remember. It's hard sometimes to remember. The incoming president is expected to sign a series of executive orders, reversing some of President Trump's policies. This American carnage. Unlike past inaugurations, the National Mall will be mostly empty for today's ceremony, due in part to security concerns following the assault on the Capitol. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. President-elect Biden is expected to call for unity in his speech after being sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts. So help me God. President Trump is breaking from tradition and will not attend the inauguration. In a farewell address released by the White House, he offered the incoming administration his best wishes while trying to cement his own legacy. The movement we started is only just beginning. Meanwhile, the Senate's top Republican said President Trump bears some responsibility for the rioters on Capitol Hill. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. The president's Senate impeachment trial may start as soon as next week. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Now you can watch the inauguration of Joseph R. Biden today on KBZK and KXLF streaming apps for Roku, Fire, Apple, Android TV. That coverage starts at 9.30 this morning and will continue throughout the morning. And tonight, join MTN News for our Facebook Live Political Roundtable. Jay Cohn and Chief Political Reporter Mike Dennison are joined by MTN analyst Ashley Strong and Eric Stern. They'll talk about the day's events in D.C., plus discuss the new Congress and our Montana delegation. So join the conversation tonight at 6.30 on KBZK and KXLF Facebook pages. 6.05 now, back here at home, continuing our coverage over an incident that happened outside the Law and Justice Center on Friday. 
leaving one man dead and a bomb squad called out from Helena. MTN's Annie Johnson joins us with more on the final outcome and where the investigation is right now. Tire marks left here in front of the Law and Justice Center from a very scary incident that had the potential to hurt a lot of people. I mean, who knows what the outcome could have been. Um, don't like to play the what if game, but um, certainly any time that someone's um, in a state of crisis, it's, a con it's concerning. And so you never know what the results may be. Friday night, a man drove his truck into the steps of the building before killing himself. Members of the Lewis and Clark bomb squad had to come from Helena because there was a suspicious package in the back of his truck. Like a package um, taped up, a uh, fairly large box taped up, uh, ultimately had some gifts inside of it. Um, but there were no markings or anything on it, so a little unusual. The man never made it inside of the building, and it's unlikely he would have been able to make it past the security checkpoint. There's signs posted all over as you come through here. Um, knives, pepper spray, weapons, anything like that that might people have tend to have in their persons. And for the most part, there haven't been any problems. We're pretty understanding it's Montana. Everybody tends to have a pocket knife with them. Uh, for the most part, people are pretty civil about it. They'll take it right back out to their vehicle. There were no injuries from any bystanders or employees of the Law and Justice Center. It just makes sense, right? We want to make sure that we can try and keep things as safe as possible in here. We sure, certainly don't want um, any harm done to the judges or in the courtrooms and those kind of things. So where, where, where does it go from here? Since he committed suicide, is the investigation closed? Pretty much. It's, essentially, it's over. Um, the, the coroner's office takes over the investigation. Um, so other than that, um, it's, you know, essentially it's closed at this point. The Law and Justice Center is open for operation during their normal business hours. Reporting outside the Law and Justice Center, Annie Johnson, MTN News. Well, the Montana legislator began its hearing two bills, began hearing two bills today, which would create restrictions on transgender youth. 112 specifically would not allow athletes to compete outside of their designated gender at birth at each level of competition across the state. If passed, the bill could have a sweeping effect across the athletics in Montana, as MTN's Kyle Hansen explains. The biggest issue for us would be NMSU hosting football playoffs because we have such a long tradition of hosting those as well as now MSU, that if we did have this bill in effect, I can only guess that the NCAA would still hold to what they have done in the past and really have to look at whether they can host those events in the state of Montana. If this bill was passed, its effects would be wide ranging. According to UM Associate AD Gene Gee, Montana could face similar repercussions from the NCAA that North Carolina did in 2016, meaning NCAA hosted events would likely not be allowed to be hosted in Montana, including things like football playoffs and more. In this case, we have a couple of policies in play. We have the overarching philosophy of the NCAA of being inclusive, promoting diversity, the championship hosting policy that looks specifically at those same issues and then providing a safe environment for all to participate. In college athletics, our goal is to be supportive of all of our student athletes. There are clear guidelines and policies in place by the NCAA in dealing with transgender student athletes. We will follow those guidelines and those policies that are in place, but we really want to be in a position where we can support all of our student athletes. Haslam and UM have firsthand experience with transgender athletes. When June Eastwood in 2019 became the first male to female trans athlete to compete in a Division I cross country race when she competed for the Montana Grizzlies. Her coach at the time, Brian Schwein, said UM and Eastwood coordinated her transition in accordance with NCAA policies, therefore her competing was fair. I think at the end of the day, when you look at June versus Jonathan, the times in which June ran compared to her gender probably lined up very similar to what Jonathan ran in comparison to his gender. So was it unfair? No, the assumption is that for that case, it was unfair. College organizations like the NCAA and NAIA have policies that allow trans athletes to compete. Meanwhile, the Montana High School Association does not have any current policy. In the case of Eastwood, Schwein said her transition wasn't about finding a competitive edge, as some suggest. June's first choice was to become a female. June's second choice was to compete. It wasn't reverse. It wasn't, I want to compete first, so I'm going to become a female to compete. In Missoula, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. 610 story we're going to continue to cover here at Montana mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, meantime, we're going to change it up just a little bit. Uh, 
Wow, Matt, uh, this uh, will uh, hearken to you because <laughs> weather definitely involved in this. Take okay. a look at this off the coast of Hawaii. Ooh, oh man. 50 foot waves Get off out. the coast. Uh, yeah, these are pro wow. surfers battling this. Uh, that's uh, Francis, uh, Francisco Porcella, Justine Dupont. Oh, Lord. Uh, yeah, they took to this off the coast of Maui. The nickname of that is uh, Jaws, and for a good reason. Those waves are um, unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Those are 50 foot waves. Uh, they had been surfing at times there on as much as 70 foot waves. Oh, it wow. doesn't even look real. No, it no, does not. No, it doesn't. No. This is like from Point Break. I, I tell you, this is one of those things for a boy from Nevada. I can't even wrap my head I, around me that. Me neither. For, for a girl from Southeast Missouri. Neither, right? Neither a long I. way from uh, the curl right. of a water. Right. We had the but... Grand Mississippi River and that was about it. There you go. I've been wow. on Canyon Ferry when it's been kind of like that. Uh, true that. I've been on <laughs> Ennis Lake like that one time too. I water skied on Ennis Lake wow. one time when the waves were 70, 80 feet tall. Yep. I'm a little shorter, so maybe my scale was wow. off. <laughs> when we talked about the tide on Lake Michigan as well. That, was, uh, there you that go. ain't nothing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, well, coming up here on Montana this morning, the coronavirus and cabin fever, it's a problem. We show you a safe solution to let off some of that energy, though. That's coming up next. That's a good one, too. Also, what's it like to be fighting COVID-19 all by yourself? One woman's tale of fighting the virus with no one by her side. But first, Matt, how is it outdoors? It's beautiful this morning. Temperatures into the 20s and 30s. Look for a little bit 